Green Airwebs, this is Jackie K. Welcome for another edition of Pokemon XG Next Gen. Not sure if I'm actually going to use this intro. I might just take this on to the end of the next video, depending on how everything spaces out. So, let's just hop right into it. My name is Absol. I'm the Absolute. My name is Malik. And I don't got a good Malik pun for that. Together we bring the power double smack attack. If I remember correctly, these two had Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan in the original XD, but we've got both those Shadow Pokemon already, so I'm kind of curious what. Ugh. So I'm kind of curious what their Pokemon are gonna be, because. Surely a plot relevant character like this pair has to have at least one Shadow Pokemon behind her sleeve, don't they? Eh, you know what, uh, might as well dance up before the bigger fresh come out on, on the field like that Lapras. And... you know, just... I think I'm better off just sharing my initial reaction to seeing this. Yeah, this Bantine is definitely like a pair with an Earthquake user, and not much else, isn't it? I thought it was kind of pretty spicy. I thought I had something going here with these two Shadow Pokemon covering the team, but I find myself just missing Talon Swift and Azumarill, especially Oh, you have freaking wild charge. I knew I should have just disabled you. But yeah. My, I think however I was feeling last night, I still got a little bit of that today. I've already like re-recording this. I only got to like the first two Pokémon, so I don't know his whole team and the whole shell Pokémon is still a mystery, but I kind of felt like I needed a second chance at that commentary. Can I catch him with spicy bolt absorb? Or lightning rod? Potato potato? Guess we're gonna find out. In hindsight, yeah, I guess leading out with Con Jenner and Mantine would be a half bad pair as well. But I completely forgot that the Tauros had lightning rod, or I had had wild charge. I'm not I can't even remember if it actually did it in the last attempt on this battle now or not. Jeez. I know this is like, a, this is like an anti-shadow Pokemon move, which... The more I play around with, the more useless I realize it is. You know, as someone who's trying to catch every single shadow Pokemon as they see them. Could be useful for the final boss, but I don't know. You know like, half of the challenge... Half of the fun challenge of that boss fight is seeing how many of the shadow Pokemon I can actually catch in one sitting. Hmm. So yeah, these next two parts are gonna be kind of interesting because there's, I think the stuff I talked about, it's not like I don't want to talk about that stuff, but it's a bit personal, so I feel like I gotta be careful with how I phrase it and make sure it comes out just the way I want it to. So there's like, post. I don't think I'm gonna say in the actual video you know, itself because I'm curious if anyone will even notice, but if there's like, if you notice any post commentary out of the ordinary, scares the midst of like the last episode or even this one, depending on how it's all edited, that would be why. Also, Medichan is kind of new, so that's kind of interesting. I'll think it is I actually swapped from this charge to Thunderbolt. This is, this is what I did for a different fight, but certainly comes in handy here. About as handy as that random crit. Oh man, what is it with everything having an answer for my Pokemon this time around? There's some. There's a Lapras that I saw last time. Jeez, I was worried about the ice move, but 
I should have been worried about that freaking med chan. Um, can I go for Shell Storm? Shoot, there's no power points. So, I can't even tell if I've done the, the Tailwind or not already. That's just how much with the. In the that's how much with the flow that I'm going into the battle with. It's kind of like when you're driving and. You don't really think too much about where, where you're going because you've gone there so many times. That's kind of just the same vibe I get while commentating while playing this game. It offers a bit more ironic, if not humorous, moments like what we've just seen the past couple times, but still. Oh, hey! You're a pretty snazzy shadow Pokemon. Too bad you're like freaking <laughs> low level as beans. Also though, how has Altaria not fainted yet? It's okay. We can work this to our advantage. I don't know. Maybe I should get the shell breeze up because this place almost close to over yet. Um but this also might be a perfect opportunity to use Hunter, just to get some trips damage before going down. Hmm, choices, choices, choices. It's like, Jolene has fast, but I know the rest of my team could appreciate it. Ah, I can... This Metagross is going to be a pain to catch, I kind of just want to pull it down as fast as I can. I should have remembered that the Lapras had Ice Charge. Ah well. At least it won't be a problem anymore. I was so convinced I just jinxed myself. I was like, wait, sure my Jolt Young's strong, but it, Lapras is a bulky little fella. Goodbye, Congenerate. <laughs> not too keen on a complete wipeout, but it's not terrible. It could have been worse. I wonder if a Metagross should be able to take an Earthquake, but... I don't know if I got it out yet, but I kind of miss Tail and Swift. I'm sure this Mantine would be a pretty good support if I actually aligned it correctly. Oh! Speaking of support, you have two Shadow Pokemon? At least this one's like a level that I can actually justify. Hmm. But the problem is now I don't really want to knock out either of them. Uh, this is kind of crazy, but Shulkle is neutral and defensive. Metagross is a freaking Metagross. Let me humor my. Let me get some humor out of this. I swear I have some vague idea what I'm doing. Ah, I see. This is how you get around the offense. Yikes. So much for worrying about, like, what can Chuckle do when it's. You know, Chuckle. Right. At least this way I can get everyone to sleep. Unless I want a Y guard to assure that I don't get hit up by Earthquake. I uh, guess I could always do that. Just do that next turn. We here at Jackie K Incorporated need HP for my balloon, and we need it yesterday. So my game plan here is to go for the Y guard, because no one should be waking up that soon. Just. Get a general idea of how much damage my earthquake is gonna do, and decide if how if I if it's a process I want to keep repeating. Okay, yeah, that's the one and only earthquake I'm gonna do. That's for sure. Chuckle, what the heck? You barely were asleep for one turn. 
And no, I don't have a sleeper. This could be a problem. Also, I just realized that there's this is just the first battle. Uh oh. Heat wave will do too much. Ice charger will knock it out, but will even do enough to really be worthwhile. Yeah, that's about as much as I expected it, it to do, and I'm not too pleased with those results. Okay, you know what? Flinch Axe is not quite a bad idea. Um, I don't know when the time has passed to use a timer ball. I am convinced I'm gonna need a timer ball for a situation, but... Until we get down to that point, uh, I could throw an Ultra Ball or two and just see how it goes. <sighs> this is gonna be a mess. Metagross is one of the hardest Pokemon to catch outside of Legendaries. Man, no, I should have just kept talking. I almost had it. <laughs> I almost caught it with irony. Okay, can we go for flinch number two? No. And now we're never gonna catch the Metagross. Absolutely never. Not gonna, I'm probably not going to have a chance to heal in between battles, so I guess I should start reviving people now. Plus, I guess, like, if I really need to put something asleep again, this would be a good way to do so. Actually... Maybe this Mantine wouldn't be that much better off. Okay. Keep going, keep going. I can... Possibly not jinx everything I ever say. There we go. There's a knockout that I was kind of expecting. Wait, weird. Does the roar filter protect me from Shadow Sky? I thought it just reduced. Shadow attacks. Okay! We might have to get something going on here. I just need to find some sort of opportunity to revive my Shadow Pokemon. And I mean, I got Bloom out here, and now that I know just how much of a threat. It is to chuckle is to fun lens specifically. I can plan accordingly. Which kinda of confuses me, because I I never really think of Balloon as some as a heavy Pokemon. But dang I did a lot for a, those shadow trips were doing a lot for a Pokemon that has literally no attack. Let's get you both asleep, and try to figure out a game plan from there. If I can... If I can juggle everyone being asleep, that can buy me the time to awake. But we all know that Shuckle is up to no good. I almost wonder if it'd be worth trying to just catch it now and get it out of the way. But my only hope of that would be with a uh, Netball. And I feel like I would need to chip it down just a little bit more before... Considering that possibility. And that being said, if I could just get out of the field, that would also be good. I wasn't keeping a good track of how many turns are left, or have passed since this Metagross has entered the field, but I know the whole battle in of itself has definitely been more than 10 turns. I didn't even think about that part of the equation. Yeah, like, timer balls are amazing here. Especially because I can always ride the placebo effect of it being, of it not just being when the Pokemon sent out, but how long the battle itself is going on. I've done so much searching, so much speculation, but I've never actually won. That was essentially a one shot, freaking wasn't it? 
That's why I'm so worried about this freaking shuckle. At least you can't get one shot by a freaking shell trip. Guess I'm just gonna spend multiple turns healing until I get everyone back up to full. Cause this pier seems to be a fairly good counter to the shuckle. Apparently I don't take damage <laughs> from shadow weather when I have the Aurora filter. I assume if it was devastating if Shadow's trip was devastating that it would have attacked Ellie by now with it. Mantine seems pretty well resistant to anything this shuckle can do. Alright, everyone's revived. Yeah, it's not even bothering trying to shell trip Ellie, which really shocks me, because yeah, Ellie's defensive. But I assume that Ellie's also heavy, you know, just being so sturdy and being ground type. That shell sickness does seem like it could be an issue. So maybe if I disable it, then I'll be able to just heal everyone back up to full, essentially for free. Well, not literally free of course, but like, in terms of risk. Cause man, I'm gonna need to make a withdrawal from the polka bank after this battle's over just to <laughs> get my potions back from this single battle alone. Oh, that's a little... Contradictory, a little contrary again, I see. Two can play that game. Assuming I don't miss. Man, this chuckle can't do anything against this pair, can it? You can just assume that any pull one doesn't attack is just having their turn being spent healing the rest of the team. I don't need to show every single heal, do I? <laughs> we can, this battle's gonna be pretty long when it, as is, hey. More damage than I was expecting it to do, but not too bad. I can sort of see why the Shuckle had that mindset that it had. Alright, I just need one more turn to heal, and I'll be all set for round two. Wow, we're almost at half an hour. I should say we're already past 20 minutes, and this was just the first battle. I keep forgetting that like, 5 minutes of it is essentially a redo. I don't know if I even want to heal a Funland, because it can heal itself. But not in this battle, where I freaking gets one shot by the freaking Shell Trip. You know what, I, I don't know if I can do it while I'm playing. I'm extremely curious how heavy Berloom is. It might just be because Berloom's a frail Pokemon in and of itself, so even a medium weight would be enough for it to be an issue. The problem is I can't really get a good opportunity to sneak it in here to get a Spore off because... Then we gotta worry about the whole mess. You know, the fact that I can just one shot Berloom anytime it's out here. Never thought a turtle would be a mushroom's biggest nemesis, but you never know. I know turtles eat fruit. That means mushrooms is never really a thought that crossed my mind, but it's not an impossibility. Or should I say tortoises? I'm pretty sure the big difference is turtles are the ones that live exclusively in sea. And tortoises are the ones that live on land. Or at least have the feet to walk on land. Because, like, you sea turtles technically nest. So they do go on land, but they definitely don't function on there. Oh, I forgot that they just vanish. So it's like you're killing them off or something. I mean, sending them to the Shadow Realm because it's Pokemon. We can't say the K-word around here, okay? You know, I kind of miss the fact that there's not really a theme going on with these guys anymore, but those shell Pokemon that we got from the last guy were pretty cool. Gotta be true about that. There's no denying that. 
And the Shekel made the perfect setup to get everyone up, happy, and healthy, ready for the next fight. Um, how did I know? How did I know it was gonna be the Shinx, not something cool <laughs> like the Salamand? Don't wanna take Shinx for granted though. Well, it's got a lovely kiss, which is something. Mm, do I got time to even like set up a dragon dance? Not sure if that's really gonna be much of an option against Behemoth's like Salamance here. Oh, of course you have Shadow Slap. I'm surprised it wasn't like an instant confusion, but I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't have some sort of secondary effect. Also, wow. Talk about baited. It's almost like you didn't go over your dragon move right away because you knew I was gonna do that. But more importantly, Altaria, you're cool and all with your dragon fairy typing in that. But you have not really been putting in the work as of late. I wonder if Nerissa should be enough to knock it out. Why I get the feeling you have like the ability that boosts his dra Nope. You don't have like an ability that turns normal moves into dragon types. I, for some reason I just knew that was gonna be the case when I saw Hyper Voice hit the field. Well I was right about being able to take out the air slash user. Didn't get any sort of tailwind or that up. I'm really on the fence so when to send out fun money just in time. It's kind of nerve-wracking. Okay. Right. This Gengar has jumped between abilities so many times, even in the vanilla games. It's like an entire cyclopedia of whether or not it has Levitate or Curse Body. It's pretty sure we fought one before and they, the modder reverted it back to Levitate. It's, it's a case where you can't follow common sense because it's literally standing on the ground. That's what he used to have, and Levitate is a powerful ability, especially in the game of doubles. Right, that's a thing. How's that work? Is it like uproar? No, it's probably more like Snarl. It's kind of unfortunate with the whole uh, air slash thing, but I'm sure it'll be okay. Gotta see how much this does. Yeah, that's kind of why I was afraid to go for the earthquake. I was kind of hoping for the paralyzation, but we can work with that. Wow, that was with a crit. My gut tells me to heal, Ellie. But we're, we're right next to a healing machine, so I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna like, take this opportunity to. Just clear out some of his Pokemon. <laughs> While it's still early on in the fight. So let's see. A one. <laughs> nope. Please don't knock out Ellie. That would be embarrassing. I have no idea if shell analysis is a physical or special move. That's the main reason I went for it instead of the air slash. Oh, not who I thought was gonna fall this turn. All things considered, and this would be a nice time to have Tail and Swift and just like priority smash everything. Uh, I do have Ice Charm. We can make this work out. So, get rid of Gengar, who should have gone down last turn. Maybe put the Shinx to sleep, and then I can start catching it. We may even have an opportunity to heal up Ellie, which might become more necessary than I thought. Just see how everything looks after this turn plays out, I suppose. 
Nope, nope, right. Shell Scream is the thing. Well, he did a good job. I don't know what I would have done if that Gengar would have stayed out and kept being up to his shenanigans and all that. Completely forgot about Gengar getting Thunderbolt. I'll get a picture with you. Maybe I'll even be able to catch you in an Ultra Ball. I'm actually kind of proud of how few Shade Balls I've used so far in this battle, but... Oh, don't worry. I got a strong feeling that we're gonna go through them all... ...in the final fight. So, I definitely have no qualms of just... ...holding on to them as long as I can. Are you the other Shadow Pokémon? Nope. I guess we still got a little bit. It's kind of unfortunate <laughs> timing for Flame Chop to come out of here. Not gonna lie. Um, it's not too great of a situation for Fun Lin either, I just noticed. Let's see, if I can move faster than Granbull though, I can at least put it to sleep and be along my merry way. Hmm. You know, I didn't get a chance to boast about how. During my walk today, I actually got two Perfect IV Shadow Pokemon in Pokemon Go. It was a Murkrow and a Hitmon top. Or, I think, I forget whether it was a Hitmon Chin or a Hitmon top. Nothing too crazy. I think Murkrow's actually pretty good as a flying type, so, especially with the Shadow Pokemon boost, I could see myself actually powering that one up someday. Not, I gotta see just how good the other fighting type is. Probably not, but it's the, it's a fun thing to boast about. It's been a bit since I've last gotten a Shining Shadow Pokemon and Go. So maybe that'll happen someday. Maybe I can set up. Oh man, if only I kept the poison move. Not the underworld though. I'm gonna get rid of this Granbull before it wakes up. We could be in for a good time. Okay, just hope I don't faint from recoil. <laughs> Excellent. And also, maybe I should be a little more concerned about, like, you know, the other Pokemon that could attack me. <laughs> Oh good, it's just wasting his turn doing his setup move. So his setup move cut me down a little bit closer than I was expecting, but oh well. Let me guess, this is the other Shadow Pokemon. Sigma Ball that was his last Pokemon, of course it's the Shadow Pokemon. Alright, so I was gonna say it has definitely has Bullet Punch, but it's a Shadow Pokemon. But because Bullet Punch is so iconic to Scizor, it's almost guaranteed that it has some Shadow equivalent to that. So... Let me just make sure I actually get this thing asleep. Oh, no priority! That's a little bit of a shock. And wait, 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 wait. It just clicked in my head. That Ambrose is not a Shadow Pokemon. How the heck did it do a Shadow Sky? Hold the phone, hold the phone. Let me just get it back on replay to make sure I saw it right. illegal. And unfortunately this is probably the worst time possible to go for a heat wave. Um, definitely can go for the overheat. You know that might actually like buy me the time to 
my problem might be that my special attack is too high now, so uh, dropping it to sure I get this Ampharos, this dirty little hacking Ampharos out of the way isn't the worst thing in the world. Yeah, a couple more green punches like that, and I can easily get into catching range. Might not even need to wait use a netball on it. So that said, now that I realize I could use a netball on it, it kind of like gives me a little set up to go for it. What's your item again, Flame Chomp? Because I wasn't. Oh, you also have the Aurora filter. I was gonna say, huh? It's kind of strange. It's not taking any gradual damage. I was going to swap to a Shadow Pokemon just to assure that I didn't run into exactly that, getting whittled away by the Shadow Sky, but if you're not taking damage from it anyways, all the better. Also helps <laughs> that I have no Shadow Pokemon to swap to at this current state in time. Alright, so we got some fun choices to play around with, and I, even though I was hoping to catch something a little higher level before, Swapping the different shell Pokemon. I think we have some fun options to play around with that would justify that. Alright, so. I think we're good. Like, still asleep. So I should be able to catch it this turn. Conserving my good balls be down. Only issues that I'm not quite sure what would be a good use of my turn. I would go for the Drain Punch and shift it down even more, but it's too close. It's slightly too risky. I guess it doesn't hurt to go for the wide card. Worst case scenario is as useless as calling. Wait, call boosts the accuracy. I guess it's good to remember that now. So hopefully I'll actually remember it for a situation I need it for. Jeez. <laughs> I think those two sets of battles in themselves were long enough to be an entire episode. I guess for now I'll, pre I'll act like it is the end of the episode. Thank you all for tuning in for another edition of Pokemon XG Next Gen. Next time we travel deeper. Maybe I'll make a quick stop at the PC and see if we can play around with some different Shadow Pokemon. I'm missing Talon Swift, especially after seeing how bad it got bodied <laughs> earlier on this layer in editing. Until then though, I'll see y'all later.